So, how's everybody doing? How's that grocery bill? How's filling up that tank of gas? Now I don't want to add to any panic, but as a personal finance channel, we need to talk about June's insane 9.1 year over year inflation. This is a much more complex issue than anyone could ever cover in a multi minute video on YouTube. But let's take a look at this thing. And as always, sources are in the description below. And also before jumping in, only a couple weeks ago, we hit a thousand subscribers five months sooner than I thought we ever would. And now we're over the halfway point to 10,000 subscribers. So if you do enjoy this video and the other content I put out, feel free to subscribe because one person will win a thousand dollars and five will each win a hundred dollars once we hit that 10,000 subscribers. Also feel free to inflate this video by giving it a like so that YouTube recommends it to more people. But jumping into things, the labor department reported Wednesday that inflation hit 9.1% for the 12 months ending in June. Prices rose 1.3% between May and June, with energy costs accounting for nearly half of the monthly increase. That's a very important aspect of this increase to understand. Energy, and in addition, food prices. Energy and food prices are extremely volatile, so when you break down inflation by just core inflation, which excludes those, we still saw aggressive inflation of 5.9% in June of this year from June of 2021, and a 0.7 increase from May of this year. And a lot of this core inflation can be attributed to rising rents in the currently ridiculous state of the car market. Rents have been rising at double digit rates with the median monthly costs topping $2,000 in May. Shelter costs are one of the biggest factors in the government's inflation measurement. And the price of new and used cars is about 30% higher than they were just a year ago. Let's see how this is impacting most people. As I already said, gas is up 60% from last year, margarine is up 35%, eggs are up 33%, men's suits are up 25%, chicken up 19%, and health insurance is up 17%. So if you're a suit wearing chicken slathered in margarine who needs to drive down to the doctor's office and use your insurance, just lay some eggs and hope for the best because you're pretty much for what it's worth, average wages are up 5.1% from a year ago, but of course that's well short of the 9.1% needed to keep up with the rising prices at every turn. The Fed still indicates that they intend to increase interest rates by 0.75%, but investors and analysts are debating whether the Fed should consider a full 1% point increase. Three Fed officials who spoke last Wednesday didn't say whether they would favor such a move, but they didn't rule it out. Slowing demand is key to the Fed's goal of restoring price stability in an economy that is struggling with supply issues, but raising interest rates also elevates the chance of a recession. We're seeing a pretty heavy impact when it comes to these rate increases when we look at the housing market. Though the median price of a home in the U.S. reached a record $407,600 in May, mortgage rates have more than doubled since January to the highest level in 13 years. Sales of previously owned homes fell in May for the fourth straight month as more buyers are just giving up, and this is pressuring sellers to cut asking prices. More than one in five homeowners dropped their asking price in May, according to the real estate brokerage Redfin. And for the first time in three years, Realtor.com said that the number of homes for sale is on the rise, up 20% in June compared to a year ago. So buyers may finally have the upper hand for the first time in a few years, but monthly payments are starting to become aggressively unaffordable for the median U.S. household as interest rates are on the rise. I broke this down in the top 10 most moved to cities in this video here. But back to this month's inflation numbers. With the war in Ukraine cutting off Europe from the primary source of gas and oil, the conflict only starting to cause chaos when it comes to the global supply of wheat, and China randomly shutting down major cities when a COVID outbreak occurs, putting major stress on the global supply chain, there are too many factors outside of the control of any country's central bank. We just don't know what the future is going to look like. Half the economists I read say a recession is guaranteed, the other half say it's unlikely. Half say the Fed needs to act, the other half says the Fed can't do anything. Half say the job market is going to stay strong, the other half say the worker economy is about to come to an end. Simply put, no one can perfectly guess where we're going to go from here. But we do know one thing for sure. People are struggling due to this rapid inflation. While prices continue to climb at a rapid rate, many people have managed to stay afloat with the help of additional savings that they stocked away during the first two years of the pandemic. Bank balances ballooned when many people were unable to spend their money on travel or live entertainment. Those savings were supplemented by government relief payments, tax credits, and additional aid. While most of that government assistance has now dried up, many people are still sitting on thousands of dollars in extra savings that can help them maintain living standards in the face of higher prices. But how long will that last? 
we're already starting to see a massive surge in credit card usage, which I covered in this video. The best thing anyone can do is make sure they have at least six months of living expenses saved. I do, and I hope you do too. A special thanks to my four cups of coffee Patreon members, Joshua Bennett, Mark, and Anthony. Link to that is in the description below. Give this video a like so that YouTube recommends it to more people. Subscribe and stick around for more. Thanks.